All righty, boys and girls, back at it again, 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 again. Here we are. Found the problem with the uh, Ferguson TEA. We got to thinking about it. Why wasn't it working? Why wasn't it working? So I got on the YouTubes, and I was looking at my friend. Well, I'm calling him my friend. I don't really know him because he lives halfway around the globe. It's uh, Bundy Bear's Shed. And this old guy from Australia, he seems to be a wizard at uh, the Ferguson uh, the English Fergusons. I'm assuming because there's so many of them over there. So as you can see, I'm going to point it out right here. This is our problem. This part of the linkage has a fang on it. I don't know if I can get it in the shot. I don't know. Let me see. Is that it? Right there. Right, right there. I'm touching it with my finger. That fang is supposed to be on this side of the upper linkage. This is the lower half of the linkage. This is the upper half. This half goes up to the height control, which is tied into the draft control, which is this here. This is broken, by the way. We got to fix that. So the problem is, is we may be taking this apart again. Well, we will be because we have to take this apart. If I can't get this apart the way it is now, I'm going to give it another try. Um, this piece threads into that piece. And this is pinned underneath. If I can't do it, then we'll be doing this all over again. But by that time, we will definitely be experts on the TEA. So, um, the recap, what happened is it would go up very, very poorly. And it would not um, stay up. It would go down, which was opposite of what we had before. Um, the valve was stuck. And... Uh, so we did this inside the hole the last time because we didn't know what we were doing. We're going to try it again, foolish as that may sound. Um, I don't know if I can videotape it, but we got to get this portion here. It has to be on this side so that this runs in a straight line. You know, when I put it together, I was thinking about it backwards, thinking, why does this not seem right? And my suspicions were true because I never had any pictures of anything. I ordered... Um, I ordered a, uh, a manual online from another guy in England on the, on, uh, on uh, Flea Bay, and I, you know, the pictures were terrible. It wasn't really, there's no pictures. Let's say I took a picture of this now, the way it is. There's no picture of that. Like, there's no, you know, there's no showing where things go. we got to be careful, Sean, because yeah, I... Ready for this because that's only I don't know how many quarts that pan is. We're gonna dump the oil out for clarity. I took the fenders off, we got the wheels off, the tires off. We did all this because A, the fender fasteners were junk, they're all corroded, and B, this is so easy to work on now. You're not trying to squirrel your head into there. So if you're working on anything like this, I mean it may sound kind of counterintuitive to start ripping parts off that you're not gonna fix or anything, but Wow. If anything I've learned from the guys working on cars today is move stuff out of the way. It's so much faster. Three minutes can save you an hour. You know, three minutes off, three minutes on. So that's what we're up against. The tractor's been running decent. I did get the kit. Um, we're going to do the carb probably in the next couple of videos coming up because I did, I did find the proper ream because i got to ream the throttle shaft bore out on the carburetor to fix that. And uh, that's where we're going with that. Um, Sean's going to start doing some body work on this. We might. I'm thinking about doing a video showing you how the old school way of brazing went. And then we'll do a, um, a comparison between brazing and, and MIG welding. And then we'll do a comparison of MIG flux versus MIG hardwire. Just to try it and see. Um, Sean was a wizard on, on brazing, man. The guy must have, I don't know, how many how many hundreds of rods do you think you melted in your career? Probably 2,000. Yeah, he's saying 2,000 rods. And, I mean, I worked with him. We did a Chevy, uh, flat, uh, square body Chevy uh, crew cab one night. And I'm telling you, man, we put, we put three sheets of sheet metal into that thing, and every bit of it was brazed. It was quite, quite the nightmare of a job. And that's what we did back in the day. You didn't have, uh, there was no such thing as these MIG welders now. You know, that, that we got now that you can run down to your uh, Harbor Freight or Canadian Tire or Ace Hardware, wherever you live. You know, um, Lowe's, 
uh, Home Depot, there was no such thing as those welding machines around. They weren't invented yet. I mean, the only welding machines around were pretty much totally uh, industrial. Um, just going over the tractor, looking at a few things that we find along the way. We're going to get to this. Now, the question is, the question has come up. Are we going to repair what we got or restore? Um, that's the big question right now. So if any has got any con any ideas on it, uh, leave it in the in the comment section there and let us know what you want to see. Do you want to restore or do you want to repair? The repair is the maybe the cheaper way out, but sometimes that becomes the longer way out. And the re and the restore is where we spend a whole piss pile of money that we don't got on uh, buying new parts. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're gonna get this drained out and we'll get back to you. All right, we got it all apart. We got the uh, linkage apart. We got the valve out. The valve was laying in the bottom. Here's the valve here. I gotta go online to do some research to figure out if these two little fangs here go to the top or to the bottom. This pin in here was bent. I took it out, straightened it the best I could. Uh, there was a little bit of buildup here on the spool. I rubbed that off. So, uh, we do have to pop the cover up enough to switch the linkages around. This piece here was the piece that the engineers at Ferguson decided to add. It's an afterthought. Early models don't have this apparently. Later models do. Um, this thing is just as cast almost. So they didn't really do any machining to it. They just drilled and tapped it. It holds in there. What it does is there's the two big forks that hold onto this guy like this. It stops them from spreading and this popping off so that's where our mistake was this was laying down in the bottom by the way it had popped right out somehow it got its way out it, this all this stuff here is kind of the most jankiest thing i've ever worked on and i, I know and I, people will say oh you're just saying that because you had because you messed it up well maybe so but that's what i've come to you know come to conclude and if you look at the one that the uh the Ferguson uh, made, or Massey Ferguson made ones, Massey Harris Company, when they took over in the United States, and it, it's a whole different design. It's not even close to this. The pump's basically the same. That's as far as it goes. The pump comes out through the top. This one comes out through the bottom. This is the bottom half of the pump that looks like an oil pan. Um, it's a bit different. Kind of a couple things that are okay is you can get power off of one of these. If you want it, you got to do a little bit of jerking around with the 35s and up. You got to put parts on. There's a valve, the selector valve that selects between three point and um, hydraulic flow to a rear rear remote. So there's some different things. But anyway, this is a, getting back to this. I'm getting off track here. This is this is a little nightmare. So we're gonna get back on this. We're gonna pull the top. We're gonna get the linkage lined up. I'm gonna try to get that little valve back in there. It's just got to sit in the hole when I figure out the orientation of the two little arms. And then this gets bolted in last to hold everything together. The hold it together part, we'll call it. And then we'll go from there. All right, there's where it lives. Um, we got the pins back here. This function is like this now. Go ahead and move that linkage. Is the spring off? Go ahead up and down. The spring's still on. The spring up top there. Hang on. Where's the spring? Did the spring fall off? It shouldn't have. Hang on. In the cover. Yeah, it's hanging down. How do you get it back? No, oh, it didn't fall, it was just dangling. I don't remember where the hole is. Hang on. Fuck. Uh, oh, shit. You can see here where we put the pin back through. All that went together easier, by the way, the second time around. I think hydraulic pressure is going to keep pressure on that, too, eh? 
but the spring still needs to be there. Does it fall out of the cylinder or it fall off the steel bracket? The steel horseshoe bracket was dangling from the top of here. Which is good, it didn't fall in the sump. Yeah, you want to hold this, hold that with that, okay? Okay, I got it. So you normally you could have all that built together, drop it down with the spring already connected, but we didn't pull the top cover off. That has the hydraulic cylinder bolted into it. And by the way, don't take these two bolts out. No. Nuts, because the cylinder falls down inside. Okay. Now, it should be good. There's four of them, actually. See the studs coming up? Those hold in the hydraulic cylinder. pocket for it on the okay. Wow, this is gonna be difficult. You got it fast the last time. I know, I know. It's okay, stand by, we're gonna oh, swear. Shit. Swearing's coming. Well that's what it should look like if it's put together correctly. Can you see the valve down there? Give me the flashlight, Sean. I want to show everybody the valve down there. Can we see? Yeah. It's plunging. Yeah, it's nice. There you go. There you can see the spool. There's a spool going in and out. Okay, so I just got to tighten my quarter-inch bolt, and we can put the covers back on. Yeah. And fill her up with oil. There you go. We got it. Yeah. Then we'll do the test and see how it goes. Oh, there you go, boys and girls. Three, three points working perfectly now. So, if I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. If I can do it, Sean can do it. And Sean can do it, I can do it. We just had to go through this and figure out where we went wrong, and we fixed it. Uh, sure was nice having the fenders and the wheels off. We got it out of the way. Um, so it works very much easier. So we got some other stuff to work on. We got some stuff that needs straightening out. Some bent stuff, some seized pins. 
with the fenders off and the wheels off, we can do much better work. Time. So the carburetor, I think, is going to be next, and then the, we're going to get back on the electrical system. Because that's no good either. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So now we have work in three-point. Because the whole project was, a month ago, was to get this thing to the point where we could put the mower on it and do some grass cutting with it, but I don't think we're going to make it. But, you know, whatever. We can keep trying. So there you go. Wrap this video up. How to get the, uh, we got the three-point working. I don't call it a how-to video. Uh, Bundy Bear got, got a better video out for that. It, this is just like what we were doing video. So, I mean, you could take it as a how-to as well, but there you go. Anyway, it's done. Talk to you soon. Uh, and uh, remember, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and check back often. We'll see you soon.